Dear Editor, I am the killer of the two teenagers last Christmas at Lake Herman. To prove this, I shall share some facts which only I and the police know. Brand name of ammo, Super X. Ten shots fired. Boy was on his back with feet to car. Girl was lying on right side, feet to west. Fourth of July, girl was wearing patterned pants. Boy was also shot in the knee. Ammo was made by Western. I want to report a double murder. If you will go one mile east on Columbus Parkway to a public park, you will find the kids in a brown car. They were shot with a 9mm Luger. I also killed those kids last year. Good bye. On July 31, 1969, the Zodiac Killer mailed handwritten letters to the San Francisco Chronicle, the Vallejo Times, and the Times Herald. Each newspaper received part of a cipher, and he demanded that they print them on the front page of their newspapers or he would go on a kill rampage. The papers did print them, and about a week later, a school teacher, Donald Hardin, and his wife, Betty, solved the cipher. This is the deciphered message from the Zodiac. I like killing people because it is so much fun. It is more fun than killing wild game in the forest because man is the most dangerous animal of all. To kill something gives me the most thrilling experience. It is even better than getting your rocks off with a girl. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise and all that I have killed will become my slaves. I will not give you my name because you will try to slow down or stop my collecting of slaves for my afterlife. Celia Shepard and Brian Hartnell, both in their early 20s, were sitting on this knoll of land overlooking part of Lake Berryessa. They thought they were alone, but there was a third man on this knoll, a man who wore a medieval-style executioner's hood, carried a knife and gun, and intended to use them. He told his victims that he had escaped from prison in Montana. They assumed he just wanted to rob them. Once they were tied up with their hands behind their backs, the Zodiac Killer brutally stabbed Brian six times in the back, and then he stabbed Cecilia ten times in the front and back. He left them for dead that evening and proceeded to Brian Hartnell's car and wrote a message on the door which included his previous murder dates. Unbeknownst to the killer at the time was that Brian Hartnell survived. The Zodiac Killer then changed his M.O. He was no longer hunting couples on Lover's Lane. He got in a cab that night driven by Paul Stein near Union Square. The evidence shows the destination of this fair was logged in at Washington Street and Maple in the wealthy district of the Presidio Heights. The cab stopped a block further in front of this house on the corner of Washington and Cherry. The Zodiac Killer then shot Paul Stein once in the head at point-blank range. Teenage witnesses in a house across the street stated they saw him wiping down the car. At some point, he also cut a piece from Paul Stein's shirt to take with him. He walked calmly away from the scene towards Jackson Street, where it is believed that he entered the Julius Kahn playground area of the Presidio. The first responding officers were mistakenly told they were looking for an African-American male. Looking back, Don Falk of the San Francisco Police Department believed that night he saw the Zodiac Killer. A composite sketch was released based on eyewitnesses. Then on October 13th, the Chronicle received a letter from the Zodiac confessing to the murder and enclosed a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. In the letter, he stated that school children make nice targets. On November 8th, the Zodiac mailed a new card to the San Francisco Chronicle and included a new cipher. Attempts to use the same substitution method to crack this new code produced gibberish. For more than 50 years, this code remained unsolved, until now. It is commonly referred to as the Zodiac 340 code. This is the Zodiac speaking. By the way, have you cracked the last cipher I sent you? My name is... I am mildly curious as to how much money you have on my head now. I hope you do not think that I was the one who wiped out that blue mini with a bomb at the cop station. 
even though I talked about killing school children with one. It just wouldn't do to move in on someone else's territory. But there is more glory in killing a cop than a kid, because a cop can shoot back. I have killed 10 people to date. It would have been a lot more, except that my bus bomb was a dud. I was swamped out by the rain we had a while back. The map, coupled with this code, will tell you where the bomb is set. You have until next fall to dig it up. My name is Kelly Marshall. In February of 2019, I solved the Zodiac Killer 340 code. The first thing that I wanted to do when I saw the code was print it out. I needed to like hold it in my hand and touch it, I guess, but so I printed it out on cardstock paper, but I also really wanted to see a transparent copy of the code so that I could overlay them and see if there was anything to be found. The mistake of this K right here, he wrote a K and then scratched it out and then wrote a backwards K. And I don't think that he would have done that if it wasn't very important to the code itself. Um, I would imagine he would have just scratched the whole thing and started over because this is very perfect. You know, he has aligned every character. Uh, I just don't see why in the world he would have scratched something out and left it that way if it didn't mean something. So that was my first clue that this is real. There is a message, there was something to be found. I didn't know what I was going to find. I had no previous interest in the case whatsoever. I didn't read a book. I watched a movie years ago about it. Um, I don't know anything about the victims at the time. I didn't know anything. So I just wanted to know, you know, I wanted to see this code. I wanted to see it with a transparent copy overlaid. And the things that stood out was the K and the look by. Right here you can see where I had circled. Look by the K, look by the line. I don't think anyone ever considered the 340 to be the key itself. And after laying the code and duplicating it on transparent paper, I kept seeing the same thing over and over in the middle. And he's saying right here, ID in it. So whenever you spin it clockwise, kind of like he's saying right here, because there's a CW with a zodiac symbol and a CW right here. Those are the same things. And to me, that's saying clockwise. So I kept trying to spin everything clockwise. Oh, well, it's going to reveal, you know, who he is. And I would spin the code and spin the code. But ID in it was the one thing that stood out and also, like I said, the look by the line. That night I went to bed and that's all I had done. The next morning I went to the computer and I was curious and that's whenever I discovered he had two other codes that had never been solved. The Z13 and the Z32. And this is the 13. It's also known as the My Name Is code. So he sent this and everyone says that it's just too short to be solved because there's not enough characters, you can't figure it out. But everyone assumed that, you know, this was gonna reveal his name. People took it and twisted it in a bunch of different ways and made anagrams out of it, etc. But when I saw this, I noticed my name is, and then a line. I mean, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to put the line there. So why did he put the line there? And that's when I kept going back. That's all I kept seeing in the, in the 340, look by the line, look by the line, look by the line. And that's when I realized even more that the K is underlined. 
So I was like, well, okay, I have the 340, I have it on transparent paper. What if I overlay it? So I had to get it precise where the characters were lined. I wanted to make sure that they were scaled accurately um, so that the K was almost the same exact size as the K in this one. And whenever I did, you can overlay it like this, just lining up the left hand column. And whenever I did, you know, I mean, there's nothing there. But interestingly enough, over here, it now says, do not, do not look by K. Uh, I wouldn't call that coincidence. He planned this out. Um, so then if you take that K, this K, and you line it up, over the K in the Z13, it now reads, my name is Tony. Well, we all know that no one names their kid Tony at all. So, you know, at that point, my name is Anthony. Um, it also reads, let me line it back up. My name is Tony of, that's when I started realizing he was coding and writing layered. You have to read it from front to back or back to front. So it says of bay, because there's B, A, Y, North. So he's saying that he is from or of Bay North. Also notice that the V right here cradles into the Y. And it says my, and if you follow that arrow, it says last name. Notice the name, zodiac symbol is right there. Then I started realizing, okay, if he's writing like this, then what else do I see? And then plain as day, um, you see the zodiac symbol right there. I was like, well, what if this close zodiac symbol was put right there? And then now you see, my name is I-O-U-C and then an X with these characters. But this almost shows you to move it down. And when you move it down, it reads I-O-U-C or I-O-U-K. Talking about Herb Kane, the San Francisco Chronicle journalist for years and years and years. So it's almost like he's saying, I owe you. And there's his name. And you have to read it vertical and horizontal. That's the way he coded it. Um, how do you know that you're right at this point? Well, in this original letter, he spelled curious wrong. We know that he knows how to spell, but he spelled it C-E. And there was a reason why he put C-E right there because when it's laid out the right way, and it's dropped down the right way, it spells key backwards. So the 340 is the key. We all know if anybody has looked at any of his letters, um, he likes to do the little bubbly eyes, the little round circles for his eyes. Well, here he is telling you to think. Think with your head. And he has the bubbly eye lined up. He also has pointed out down here, there's an H and a T in the zodiac symbol at the bottom. And whenever you look up here, the very next HT that you see, it now spells out hint. So to read his message, go back to the K this is the zodiac. By the way, I have the last cipher, my name is, and then it has Tony. But down here, it's very interesting. It says Posh One, boy. And now this on the 340 is forming an exclamation point beside one. And he says the boy. There's a reason why he mentions that. 
And that's because on the night of Paul Stein's murder, there were known teenage witnesses across the street. And since the person was deceased in 2016, his name became known. And his name is Xenophone Anthony. And his name is right here in the code, plain as day. So you can't help but wonder whenever he wrote this is almost like a mockery. Posh one boy, move in on Zodiac. Why? Because the boy identified him by name, literally by name, and they had his street address, which was on Jackson Street. So his name is right here. Um, he called out the boy in the letter, and he's also calling out Herb King. So these two little marks right here are kind of showing you to move it up or down. You'll also see when it's lined up perfectly, not only will you see that it spells out key, but you also see ID, ID, my ID. Zen Tony. And whenever it's on the K, he specifically says that that is my last name. Hi, I'm calling, this is Kelly Marshall. Um, I wanted to speak with you because I saw that you're the detective that's been working recently on the Zodiac Killer case. Um, and I am just wanting to speak to you. I've cracked the code, um, the 340 cipher, and um, I've tried to reach out to different people about it and I'm not getting any kind of response. So I thought I would reach out to you um, and just see where to go from there. Please give me a call back. Thanks. Dun, dun, dun. Are you still there? Hello? Hello? This is just the anxiety that you get before you try to call another detective. Um, to tell them what information or what's transpired. Um, kind of deep down knowing that you're not gonna be taken seriously, which is frustrating. But, I mean, this is a detective in Vallejo and he has been assigned to the Zodiac Killer case so he's the one that's in charge. And above and beyond him, right now, I don't know who to go to. Um, so I've left a message for him before. That was many months ago. And I'll try to call him again.
this is Kelly Marshall. I believe that I called you a few months ago, um, and I never did receive a call back. I would really like to talk to you at your earliest convenience um, about a case that you are assigned to, um, the Zodiac Killer case. And I know this probably sounds like a quack call, and you may get a lot of them, um, but this is for real. I do have the information that you guys would um, definitely be interested in. And just FYI, it, it's not just what you all think. Um, it's a lot deeper than that. I've cracked his 340 cipher, um, and then they missed things on the first one. So I have all that information, and I am in the process of doing a documentary uh, because I've kind of hit roadblocks on trying to report this, and I really don't know what else to do um, to you know, kind of basically get this off my head at this point. Um, so please, my number is and my name is Kelly Marshall. Thank you. We'll see. Don't hold your breath. So, I just wanted to give an update. Today is September 13th. The last videos that I made um, where I was calling and leaving voicemails to the detective, um, it's now been a month. I have not received anything back. Um, no phone calls, no messages. Um, in that time, I've also sent emails, uh, well, an email, to the mayor of Vallejo. Um, and haven't heard anything back from him either. Um, hitting a lot of roadblocks, getting in, you know, in touch with anybody. No one wants to listen because no one believes. Uh, I mean, I, it's been months and I haven't, you know, got a response back from anybody other than absolutely not interested with cryptographers that I've sent it to. Um, not their thing. Uh, I know somebody has to be interested. I've sent messages to tip lines. I've sent, you know, a tip to the FBI. Um, I guess a lot of people are wondering, well, what are you saying? Well, I'm just saying what it is. Could I get a call back? Like, I've solved it. Uh, like, talk to somebody about it. Could you please get back to me? Uh, I think that makes the most sense. I don't know too many people out there that, um, sorry, that's my cat banging. Luna, stop. Stop. Um, I don't know too many people that would leave a complete and total detailed voicemail of what they found, you know, their results. It's kind of silly to do that, I think. Also, uh, a little irresponsible to send it via email. I'm just wanting like a conversation. I prefer, um, and I feel like it needs to be face-to-face. That's what my goal is, and so far I have not had any luck. So he sent this Halloween card, and he has a lot of clues within the card itself. He's got these eyeballs that look like C's. He's got the word boo, and it's written out correctly right there. Um, instead of how in the cipher, you'll see that it's backwards. So that's a big clue as well. Um, the 14 is really important because the 14th line up from the zodiac symbol is the whole line where it says I-O-U-C. And what's interesting now, pay attention to these characters right here, that X and it's supposed to be a G and a V. Well, remember the boo is spelled out this way. And... When you flip the cipher, boo is spelled out correctly, and then if you rotate it, like he said to do before, clockwise, you now see that on that 14th line that he clues in on the code is his name. I-O-U-C, read backwards, and then X, that G is now an E, and then that's an N. And he has the zodiac symbols right here and here, and then a dot. 
Also notice that the key mark, the scratched out K and then the lowercase K, and then the F. That's important because in this letter here that I'm about to show you, he points those out. So rotating the, cl the code clockwise, flipping it, having Boo the right way, you know, gives you his name. Zen. And I'll just go ahead and show you how this works. Okay. <clears throat> so I wanted, to, like I said earlier, I feel like I have to touch things, you know? So I wanted to see the movement, what happens whenever you have, what is my <laughs> so I've got an F and an L, and let's just line them up like they are. Well, whenever you straighten it, it now creates a new letter, and that letter is E. So he has signed his name, X, E, and whenever you flip it so you can see the X, that's now an N. So this is, a, this is his name right here. This is a card that he sent um, Monday, October 5th, 1970. You'll hate me, but I've got to tell you, the pace isn't any slower. In fact, it's just one big 13th. Some of them thought it was horrible. Um, you have to flip it to read the rest of his message. There are reports, city police pig cops are closing in on me. FK, I'm crack proof. What is the price tag now? So the FK is very important, he, and he is showing you in this card that you do have to flip it. You do have to rotate it clockwise or however. Um, interesting, plain as day, 13, and then there's a T. The 13, 13th line up from the zodiac symbol, which he's you know, always showing you, the 13th line is the T. And he's saying P.S. T. P.S. And that T is very big. Um, he's cluing you in that that is a T for Tony. It's not a plus symbol. There's no, it's not a character. It's an actual representation of the letter T. So this one is really important to just show you how it's solved. The F.K. in it, I'm crack proof. Well, there's the F.K. right above his name. And you can clearly see his name in the code, like he promised, his ID is in it, only if you flip it and reverse it like this. This is uh, another card that a lot of people have tried to analyze his meaning. It's just showing you what I've shown you already, that the code is meant to be read vertical and horizontal, and that will reveal his name. Interestingly enough, he's got by, 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 all written horizontally. This one's vertical, and he is showing you a hint because it's by the K. He's made that error with the N because you, whenever you flip the code, this is now backwards, and that will reveal his name. This is another letter that the Zodiac Killer sent, and in it he says, the man who told the police that my car was brown was a Negro about 40 to 45, rather shabbily dressed. I was at this phone booth having some fun with the Vallejo cop when he was walking by. When I hung the phone up, the damn thing began to ring, and that drew his attention to me in my car. Notice in this letter, he doesn't have to have that X right there or that drawing, the little doodle. When I hung the phone up, the damn, and then that space, thing began to ring. And that Drew, well, interesting that he did draw right above where he put Drew, his attention to me. So drawing attention to me, the X, and it says I right above it. So that's his signature again in that letter. He just seemed to constantly put his identification out there, his initials, and probably laughed about it forever that no one solved it. When I solved the 340 cipher, I knew at the time the 408 had already been solved, so I never really looked at it. 
But after seeing the way that he coded and wrote things layered front to back, well then I decided to take a look at the 408 to see if they missed anything. I had discovered that there was a whole line of code that was never um, deciphered. You'll see again, this last line right here was not deciphered. But what is interesting is again, it's his name. X, E, and then that V when it's flipped is an N. His initials are right here, and right above it, it says Key, K-E-Y, to the Zodiac, and his initials are right here. So this is one part of the 408 code, and one thing that I noticed right away is that it says I'm in the word top, and it is the only one that does not have the repetitive characters at the bottom. This E-H-M... E-H-M, the Q-E-H-M. So knowing what I knew about laying them on top of each other, I did, and then I started to realize that he was cluing in, even with the 408, his initial. Um, the X is also a repeat in the same area, the same place. And this line here just completes the X. And right here, you have a star almost showing you right on top of the X that it's important. So to pay attention to the X. This one, the one that doesn't have those same characters, has just one X in all of it. And when you take that one X right here and lay it on top, you now see that he's spelling out, it says N A M. E. And his name is right here, X-E-N. It's really hard to see. <laughs> I know that that's really hard to see. But I'll show you plain as day right here. X-E-N. L is his middle name. And it's rubbed off, but that is an L. So X-E-N, his middle initial, his last name. And then part of the zodiac symbol the letter Z and part of the, uh, you know, to finish it up. So he's showing you right there, that that's his full name, his initials. And in this part, you can see his name is also spelled out backwards, X-E-N.